everybody, Joe Dungan. Welcome to Joe Dungan's Talk Show, Episode 4. How about them opening credits, huh? Big ups to my friend Nikki Hayworth for coming up with that, that animated graphic on her own. She still thought I called it Late Night Cup of Joe, hence the coffee motif. But I'm using it anyway. She went for it. And I'm like, ah, that's cool. I like it. So I threw that in. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I'll change the name of the show just so I can use that graphic. And big ups to Juan Camacho for drawing my head. Now back to me. And big ups to the composer of the music. I got that from YouTube's audio library, their royalty-free library. And this particular one said no attribution required. But I require it because the man's an artist. His name is Aaron Kenny. That's called Gaiety in the Golden Age. Isn't that fun? Huh? I was flipping through sounds, songs. I'm going, I like that one. I'm putting that in. So there you have it. That's that. This is a unique episode of Late Night Cup of Joe. It's a departure from the others. It's kind of mellow. It's kind of kind of a lower key version. It's a fellow named Chris Lukather. He is a very intelligent, cool cat. And like my other guests, I'm realizing this guy is a multi-potentialite. Everyone, all the guests I've had on the show so far are people who are good at a bunch of things, and he's another one. This guy studied fine arts. He self-published two books on local architecture, and he's working on a third one. He became a historian, an aficionado of sorts, of a particular t style of architecture unique to the L.A. area. It's, it's popped up in other parts of the country, but it started here. And he's got some stories to tell. He's got some interesting things to say about the architecture. And it's mostly a slideshow, kind of a unique episode. I put up slides, and he just talked about each of the houses. So I'd say about two-thirds of the episode is just him talking with slides. So I'm going to put the links in the YouTube page, and if you'd like to go to the links for his books and follow along with the slides we're looking at or hop around the websites as he's talking, feel free. Uh, but stick around, listen to what he has to say. Forgive the editing. It was a little clunky. I tried to do Zoom sharing of the pictures as we were talking, and it didn't quite work out as smoothly as I thought it would, so I had to do a lot of cleanup and post, and it's still a little messy. But how much did you pay for it? Come on, quit complaining. Would you shut up? Jeez, show some gratitude. What's wrong with you? Every, this happens whenever I talk to you. It's always this. Me, 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 me. It doesn't, he didn't color correct it. He didn't white balance it. You, 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 you know what? The things I do for you people, both of you, come on, knock it off. Did my best. And uh, I say wow a lot. If you'd like to, if you, if you need a drinking game tonight and you want to make Joe Dungan's talk show a drinking game, Make wow your drinking game, because I say wow a lot this episode. So every time I say wow, take a drink. There is that. I'm wondering if there's anything else I wanted to tell you in particular about this episode. I can't think of anything. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. Please welcome Chris Lukather. Chris Lukather, how are you, sir? Thanks for joining me. Good. How are you doing? Doing as well as I can be. You know, we're one day closer to... Uh, Back to normal, whatever that was. Do you, yeah. do you remember normal? Uh, vaguely. Yeah. Uh, about a year ago. Yeah, it's a little hazy, but uh, yeah. but uh, we're doing the best we can here. I did right. find your site. I wanted you for the old talk show, the live show that we used to do before the pandemic, and then we couldn't quite make the schedule work. And then I started this one. I thought, now I'm reaching out to people who couldn't make it, and you are definitely one of them. So thanks for coming. Yeah, First of all, you. you are a... You're an author. Is it fair to say you're a champion of Cinderella Homes and Melantine Homes or uh, a historian? What, what term would Ranch you Ranch Homes, you could say, or undiscovered uh, builders, home builders and architects from the 1950s and 1960s. Um, primarily in, you know, I grew up in, in the San Fernando Valley. So uh, Cinderella Homes and Melantine Homes were built in the valley um but uh you know all over southern california and now what did you uh how did you first get into these homes did you did you study architecture in college or is this just a, a uh no i studied uh art uh fine art at cal arts um cal arts graduate and um i've worked mostly as a graphic designer um and i have a literary journal a quarterly literary journal called the writing disorder uh, <laughs> we publish new fiction poetry nonfiction, and art and i've always been interested in 
architecture. Um, I guess back in 2016 or 17, um, my wife and I were looking at homes in the valley and we came upon a listing for something called a melantine birdhouse which is kind of intriguing. We didn't, I didn't know what it was. Uh, and you know, I grew up in the Valley. I went to uh, Millican Junior High School. So from where I lived to Millican, driving down Magnolia every day was all these Melantine homes. I never noticed them until a few years ago. Yeah, um, I, I'm from the Valley too, and I didn't know these had names. To me, yeah. to me, they're just homes. Yeah, yeah. So they have birdhouses on the, or a cupola, on the roof of the garage or the living room. And they're throughout the valley. Some of them aren't melantine. Some of them are imitation. Other builders copy the style. And um, so through finding this listing, uh, my wife was very interested in it, Joanne, and then I became interested in it. So as we went to more and more uh, open houses, I would ask realtors about Melantine, you know, who he was and, and the birdhouse design. And two uh, realtors said that they knew the family, which, you know, I had no idea they were still in the, in, in the valley or, or whatever. So through a few emails and back and forths, I was able to get in touch with the son, who is Mike Melantine. Um, so he built homes just like his dad. And he's in his late 80s, still alive. And I, so I met with him and began interviewing him for what at that time was go going to be an article. And then uh, through meeting with him and gathering more and more material, which there was none, absolutely nothing you could find on, on these people. Uh, through his own archives, I was able to get family photos and um, a lot of inside information about him and his dad building these birdhouse homes in the valley. So then I decided to uh, publish a book. Did you self-publish or did you find a publisher for them? Uh, self-published because I'm a graphic designer. So I wrote the book and I designed the book. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at some of these oh, photos and they are <laughs> quite impressive. Uh, what yeah. is this are we looking at? It looks like a magazine advertisement. The cover of a brochure. And it wasn't a small brochure. This brochure is like 11 by 14. So, and it, and it was a trifold. So it opened up and uh, really nice. They did a lot of nice advertising. And what, this would have been in the post-war era when everybody had money and everyone was racing to the Valley to buy a house? Yes, the, these, the first Cinderella homes were built in Anaheim um, and they were built in the early fifties prior to Disneyland opening. Uh, Disneyland opened in 55, I think. Uh, so the first custom Cinderella homes were built in Downey, California in 1953. Uh, these are tract homes. So he and his brother got a loan from a bank and they built 900 tract homes in Anaheim. Whoa, 900. 900 tract homes. That's a lot for a bank loan. Yeah. Just a guy. Well, it was the first tract of like 400 or 300, then another tract of 200. Anyway, the, the total of the first three tracts which Gene was involved with was 900 and something homes. And then they franchised the name so that later there were Cinderella homes in the Valley. So they're all over the place. There's actually homes in uh, Kansas and Houston, Texas and Nevada, Arizona. Uh, really? Yeah, I've seen them all over. I've seen them in uh, Santa Maria, uh, Ventura, uh, Santa Barbara, they're, they're all over the place. Now, is this a cover of another brochure? Yeah, this is another brochure. This is the first uh, tr Cinderella tract homes uh, mm. that Gene designed. Most tract homes back in the day were all boxy, plain looking, cheap mm. looking homes. And his idea was to make them look really great and put some extra features in them and make them look like custom homes. And this is the cover of your book on the subject. Yeah, so that's the cover of the book. That's an actual photo they use to publicize the open houses. So <laughs> got a coach with a Cinderella and uh, that home is actually still there in Anaheim today. Wow.
Wow. This was... They, they did a lot of advertising. How effective was this advertising at the time? Well, they had people lining up overnight. So people, like the first custom Cinderella home in Downey, they had over 20,000 people through sheer word of mouth come out to visit the home. Wow. And when they started building tract homes after World War II, when a lot of people need, you know, there was a lot of new families and uh, returning vets and they needed homes. So Gene built these homes, which were just amazing looking compared to other tract homes. So they had people camping out overnight. They sold out the first tract, which was three or 400 homes like in a week. And then all 900 homes sold out like in a couple of weeks. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really something. That's Gene. This is Gene? So Gene Vandruff. He's uh, 98. And we, uh, well, I first interviewed him at his um, son's house in Anaheim. And I interviewed him for four hours, uh, recorded uh, an interview with him. And then at the end, I said, would you be interested in going on a field trip with me and going and seeing some of your original homes? So he was up for it. So we did like, four or five field trips, including out to the valley, which he had he had never been to the San Fernando Valley in his entire life. Come on. Yeah, never. But Because wow. but, uh, they franchised the homes to other builders. They built homes in the valley and, and other places. So he would go right up to people's doors, knock on the door and say, you know, I'm Gene Vandruff. I built and designed your home. And then he'd go inside and show them everything and talk about it. Very energetic, very... Uh, articulate and funny and smart guy. And how was he received by homeowners who just had this guy knock on the door saying, I built your house, can I come in? Well, they were shocked. <laughs> some of people, some people that live in these homes didn't realize it was a Cinderella home because some of them had been, you know, updated and uh, some of the Cinderella features were removed. But most people knew that they lived in a Cinderella home and they loved it. And they always talk about the quality of the build and how long these homes lasted we met a couple of original owners um or you know from their parents passed down to their children um but he's uh he still drives he still has a driver's license he's wow still, still drives a car so this is a uh cinderella tract home out in canoga park these were built uh by a company called roven and spiegel and they franchised the homes from uh, Gene, and they they paid a hundred dollars per home. Wow, which is pretty cheap. <laughs> yeah, pretty cheap. Now, the hundred bucks that was a licensing fee. Yeah, licensing fee. Yeah. Now, what what exactly what what characteristics define a Cinderella home? Is it the A-frame at the uh, door there? Uh, that's one of the features. There was about. 20 different models, um, you know, diamond pane windows. Um, the shake shingle roof was a major feature, which they had to eventually, uh, they were, became a fire hazard and they outlawed them. But the shake shingle roof, the, um, the open floor plan. So some of these homes, you could walk in the front door and you could see all the way to the back of the house. And the kitchens had a like a, a window so that if you were in the kitchen and your family was in the living room or your friends you could talk to them through this this window in the uh, wall and this was this was a not a common feature in houses up to this point no uh you can see that feature in some english homes uh i've seen it but not not out here a lot of custom features on the outside um, they were just unlike any um, tract home at the time. Three bedrooms, two baths. Um, most homes back then were like two bedrooms and one bath. So this is the first custom uh, Cinderella home that was built in Downey, California. So that's Gene. I, I took this photo of him outside there a couple of years ago. Hmm. It's yeah, still I noticed there. the, the, um, the uh, decorations are on the windows. Are those the diamond pane windows you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. So that's mostly original out front. I think the inside's been uh, gutted. Charles Phoenix shot a video of this home when the original owner, the woman, sold it and she put it on uh, 
had an open house and all the furniture was removed, but he went in and he did a walking tour of this home. You can probably look for it on YouTube. So you can see what the original home looked like before it was remodeled. This is uh, another one in Canoga Park. Um, it's, uh, I'm not sure which model. Each one has a model number, like an R17 or a R15 or something like that. So it would refer to the design, whether it was on the left or the right. This one, the garage entrance was through the alley in the back. Um, some had the garage in the front, uh, but that's a typical, you know, the windows, um, the window treatments had different decorations and, you know, the used bricks, uh, which a lot of people used back then. So this looks, wow, a 1959 billboard for yeah. how to get a Cinderella yeah, home. Homes out in the valley. There's, there was actually a, a bigger billboard in, um, uh, mm. but this, you know, they did a lot of advertising. Well, I can see, you know, these houses have personality and you're talking about features in them that you and I take for granted. Right, right. Because we grew up thinking, well, I guess every house is like this. And now you're saying, no, a guy mm -hmm. thought of this. Tract homes. So, if, if you drive around Van Nuys, you can see the um, uh, Kaiser homes. Uh, there were tract homes built by Kaiser Steel during World War II. Um, and then they built cars as a Kaiser car. And there were Kaiser homes. And if you look at those homes, they're kind of rather boxy, plain looking homes. But these are, you know, would catch your attention. These, these uh, were really popular and, and they got a lot of national advertising as well. Wow. Is this what I think it is? Yeah, this is the bathroom tile. So in the uh, bathtub shower, um, you would see these custom tiles, which some people have removed and some people have them framed on, the, on their uh, on the wall. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I mean, they were of an era, definitely. I, I don't see, I can't imagine too many bathrooms today being decorated with this sort of tile, but I can see how in the 50s, this yeah. would be a, a selling point. Right, right. Wow. You don't, you, I've never seen those before. That's really something. In addition to these Cinderella homes, you are also an aficionado of the birdhouse homes, also known as Melantine homes. And this yeah. is the cover of that book that you wrote. Right, that's the Melantine birdhouse homes. And these are all over the valley. Uh, there's a lot of imitation birdhouse homes. Um, people always email me and say, do I live in a real birdhouse home? And, you know, I don't really wanna be the uh, bearer of bad news, but a lot of people live in imitation Melantine homes. Now, now, how can you tell an imitation from a real one? Well, if you look at the, you know, obviously, if you study something long enough, you learn the differences. Um, uh, like Melantine had several different style of birdhouses, uh, the cupola on the roof, and his were just, you know, better built. Uh, the quality of his homes were better better built. They they weren't like if you were buying a home after the war, you uh, probably the average person might not be able to afford a Melantine home. They were a little more expensive because they were custom homes. They weren't tract homes. Mm. Um, but they did have, you know, like five or six basic plans to go by, but you could customize it. So if you wanted extra cabinets, extra, um, you know, an extra closet or whatever, he would customize the home for you. And he built uh, 3,000 homes in Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley. 3,000 homes? Yes, from the 1920s to the 1960s. And same with Gene, Gene Vandruff uh, built, there's over 6,000 Cinderella homes. Amazing. There's some in uh, Kansas, there's some in Texas, you know, they're all over. And this is, uh, I'm on That's a Melanie's Melanie. website yeah. here, and this is a representative birdhouse home. Yeah, so, you know, like the garage with the double X's, the, double, the diamond pane windows, um, and then the, the birdhouse, and then there's also on the side of the garage, you can see the little bird holes. Um, these are all design features. They weren't a functioning birdhouse. Uh, some people had to put little screens over them because birds would go in them. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I thought it was on purpose, but it was just for show. 
Yeah, it's just a design. And then the, the little thing on the top is called a finial, which a lot of them have broken off. But and that's just another almost, decorative uh, item? Yeah, it almost looks like a, a chair leg or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, this looks like another birdhouse home along with a schematic of sorts. Yeah, a lot of the homes, well, I won't say a lot, but many of the homes had the original blueprints inside the home. Uh, so an owner, when they sold the home, they would leave the blueprints behind for the next owner to have. So you can go into some people's homes and they'll have the framed blueprints on the wall over their fireplace. That's uh, unique. Yeah. That's, I'm trying to think of a comparison for that. Wouldn't it be nice if everything you bought had blueprints? Yeah, there are like four or five or six uh, blueprints rolled in a tube. And uh, there was a rumor that they were stored in the wall in the kitchen, but uh, it was never substantiated. No, and it's a, these, these also have their own personality too. You can see uh, the, uh, the decorative wood paneling on the garage yeah. door. Right. More diamond or triangle windows. Is that diamond cut windows again? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the diamond pane windows in the front. And then the garage doors either had X's or Z's or some sort of design to them. And um, yeah, there's the book and there's the original blueprints. These are all different types of birdhouse designs. So this just has it in the, the holes on the side of the house. It didn't have a cupola on the roof. Do you I, know it at one point and it, and it could have been uh, taken down. Do you know where this, any of these houses in particular are? Uh, this one's in Van Nuys. Um, uh, there's a lot of them around Magnolia and between Coldwater and Fulton. That's where the model homes were. Um, and in, in the neighborhoods around that area, Sherman Oaks is the prime area for Mellentine homes. This is called a, <clears throat> excuse me, a story and a half where there's an upstairs above the garage. He wouldn't call them two-story homes. He'd call them story and a half. Well, that's honest, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so there was a, a bedroom up there? Yeah, there's a bedroom and a bathroom. Um, some people have modified them and uh, put a little uh, outdoor patio on the roof. Looks like another example of the birdhouse yeah. uh, side of the garage, perhaps? Mm-hmm. And that's just, you know, the, the window into the garage. Mm -hmm. There's a close up of another <clears throat> one. Yeah. You can see yeah. the holes. Is this the, is this the side of a house? Yeah, that's the garage. So that's an open birdhouse on the roof where it's open on all four sides. Um, some people had to put a uh, mesh around it to keep the birds out. Yeah, that's, I, I've noticed that in a lot of these, there's, there's mesh around some of these houses. I'm yeah. going, oh, okay, they obviously don't want Real birds. birds getting in there too much. <laughs> um, now, have there been tours of these? Uh, yeah, there were some tours through the museum of the San Fernando Valley. Um, before the pandemic, we did uh, several tours of Mountain homes and we had talked about doing tour, uh, Cinderella home tours. So maybe next year, maybe perhaps. Yeah, because it sounds like a, a cool thing. It sounds like something that some locals would really dig. Yeah, Andrew. what we did was we, um, we had some people let us go into their homes. So we start the tour walking around the neighborhood and then we'd end up at somebody's house where you could go inside and look around. Wow. So yeah. That's nice. That's awfully yeah. generous of them to do that. And your books are available on Amazon, is that correct? Uh, yeah, they're on Amazon and then on the websites. There's a Cinderella Homes uh, website and there's a Melantine. Oh, and I also have The Writing Disorder, which is writingdisorder.com. That's the literary journal. So you can find me there. There's a Facebook and Instagram for The Writing Disorder. Uh, there's a Facebook page for Cinderella Homes and Valentine Homes. What okay. is, tell us about the book you're working on right now. Uh, we're going to book on Robert Bird, which is B-Y-R-D. He built homes with birdhouses um in the valley and in he built a lot of homes up in the hollywood hills there's a rumor that the sharon tate house was designed by robert bird but that has not been proven and uh like ron howard lived in a bird home uh stan winston the, you know the guy who did special effects makeup 
so I'm writing a book on Robert Byrd and uh, and his son Gary. Far out. We will find updates of that on your uh, website yes. one of these days, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Chris Lukather, great talking to you, man. Thanks All right. for great talk, talking to you. Too. Thank you very much. I realize I never told you where I was coming from. I'm recording this from my walk in closet. And what you see here and here are leftover pieces of carpet from when I had the place carpeted way back when. And I thought, what a great place to make a little recording studio. And I am sitting pretty much in the entire thing. The door leading out is about two feet away. There just isn't much room in here. It's a closet. What do you want? I hope you liked that.